to mark 40 years of living with type 1 diabetes, I went out and I ran 40 half marathons in one year. My reason for switching to a plant-based diet was that I couldn't recover from exercise. And it was taking me six or eight weeks to recover from a half marathon to go from and to go from six to eight weeks to recovering from a half marathon in six days is just a world of difference. Hi, my name is Paul Coker. I've been living with type 1 diabetes since July of 1977. I was five years old when I was diagnosed and I have seen just about everything come and go under the sun in terms of diabetes. Um, started out life without even having the technology to test my own blood glucose levels. It was time for peeing in, in a cup and um, testing urine to see what my glucose levels in my urine were. And I was on one injection a day. Um, today I'm on an insulin pump and a, a continuous glucose monitor. And I, as I say, I've seen everything come and go. Um, I started out life being taught that carbs were the enemy and I needed to carb count. Then uh, in the early 80s, they said that carbs weren't the enemy and don't even bother counting the amount of carbs and just randomly guess the amount of insulin that you need. And then we went back to carb counting and I went on to low carb, high fat diets. Um, and when I first met Cyrus, I was on a low carbohydrate, high fat diet. Um, I was aiming for less than 30 grams of carbohydrates a day. I wasn't really achieving that. I was probably sitting on somewhere between 50 and 70 grams of carbs a day. I was running um, three to four times a week and I was running um, one to two half marathons a year. And the real challenge for me was that I could go out and I could run for a couple of miles, maybe even four or five miles, and that was okay on a low carb diet. But when I ran, went out and ran for 13 miles on a half marathon, it would take me six or eight weeks to feel like I'd actually recovered from that. And I just get so, such severe fatigue and the muscles could never really recover. Um, and I knew then that something was wrong. When I first started the Mastering Diabetes program, uh, I started out just by uh, increasing the amount of carbohydrates that I was eating at breakfast. Um, and what I was doing, and I still do it to this day, in, in the mornings I'm insulin resistant. So I was getting up in the morning and I was exercising before I did anything. And then I would eat a breakfast that had carbohydrates in it. And when I'm talking about carbohydrates, I'm talking about a, a fruit-based breakfast. So today, and my, my, my morning uh, management has not changed in the whole time. Uh, so I'll get up and I'll go out and I'll run. And it only takes me 20, 25 minutes to go out for a, a run that just amps me up in terms of insulin sensitivity for the day. And then I'll eat a big bowl of fruit. And that's usually things like mangoes and dates and bananas when I was peaking on uh, my insulin sensitivity a couple of years ago, I'd probably be eating around about 150 to 200 grams of carbohydrates at breakfast. But now I'm a little bit more relaxed and I'm not training quite as hard. And I'm down to about 120 grams of carbs for breakfast. After a week or two of, of doing that, I then brought in a high carbohydrate lunch. Uh, and that was really my main meal of the day. And we were then talking in terms of kind of to 250 grams of carbohydrates at lunchtime. Again, it was predominantly fruit-based. It was all whole plant foods, um, may, maybe including some things like some starchy vegetables, some green vegetables, things like rocket uh, or arugula, as the Americans like to call it, and, and some uh, spinach and, and sweet potatoes, and, and things like that. And then in the evening, um, I switched again to a, a carb-based meal in the evenings, perhaps a few fewer carbs in the evening than I was having at lunchtime, perhaps down to about breakfast levels. And uh, it was really about limiting the amount of fat that I was taking. So um, what, what I found was that uh, my blood glucose levels didn't rise nearly as high as I thought they were going to in terms of having carbohydrates because the carbohydrates were all from plant foods. And that um, my insulin action profile became much more predictable. And so I was initially finding that um, I was needing to change things just a little bit because I'd been used to eating, uh, injecting my insulin and then eating. So I, I found that my insulin sensitivity was increased, but because I was eating high carbohydrates, what would happen is that I would get a, a, a spike at mealtimes, but it would come down very quickly. 
And so just a simple modification of actually taking my insulin before the meal and, and trying to work out uh, I'm going to eat in 10 minutes time um, solved the problem. And that was really the biggest adjustment I've made. But what happened then was that I found that I could go out and I could exercise more, um, which for me was great. So when I met Cyrus, um, I think I'd had diabetes for 38 years at the time. And to mark 40 years of living with type 1 diabetes, I went out and I ran 40 half marathons in one year. My reason for switching to a plant-based diet was that I couldn't recover from exercise. And it was taking me six or eight weeks to recover from a half marathon. To go from, and to go from six to eight weeks to recovering from a half marathon in six days is just a world of difference. It wasn't just a case of recovering from the half marathon in six days because I would go out and I'd run a half marathon typically on a Sunday. And then on Monday morning, I would get up and I would go for a recovery run. And then on Tuesday, I'd be out running five or six miles. On Wednesday, I'd be out running seven or eight miles. And then I would taper down on Thursday and Friday, take a day off on Saturday, and then run 13 miles on Sunday. And I did that for a year, every single week, or almost every single week for a whole year. And I can tell you that the more that I complied to the um, whole plant foods diet, the better I felt. And on the few occasions where I was traveling and it wasn't so easy and you, you'd kind of, it, it wasn't a case of not being vegan, but it was a case of having foods that didn't meet my normal high standards and had a little bit more fat in. I really did feel it. and It was that much harder to do the next run. Um, and it really did burn me out on those occasions on the diet that I had previously. I just didn't have the energy levels for it. And, and now, um, you know, I, I work uh, a lot of hours and on top of working a lot of hours, I'm doing a lot of traveling and I'm talking at conferences and, and my, my life is hectic and most other people can't keep up with me. And that's whether they've got diabetes or not. Uh, when I met Cyrus, I think I was um, taking around about 37 units of insulin a day and 24 units of those were for basal insulin. And so today, uh, I'm taking 15 units of insulin for basal. And my insulin sensitivity is not great right now because I've, been, I've not been following the uh, regime as, as diligently as I would like. So I'm probably on about 25 to 35 grams of fat a day right now. And my um, insulin to carb ratio is one to 30. But when I was following this very diligently and I was on less and I was having a total budget of 20 grams of fat a day, I was actually on one unit of insulin for 50 grams of carbohydrate at, at bolus. Um, and I was on eight units of insulin for my basal. When, when I peaked, I think I was on eating 930 grams of carbohydrates on less than 20 units of insulin in a day. And I was still struggling to keep my blood glucose levels up. My favorite meal to eat would be a huge bowl of, of mangoes, probably three or four mangoes, uh, four or five bananas, and uh, three or four medjool dates with uh, some um, chia seeds on the top. And why not throw in some acai berries as well? If you're thinking about doing the plant-based diet or you're follow thinking about following the Mastering Diabetes program, then my advice to you would be the same advice that Cyrus gave me when I first started on this. He said, try it for 21 days. If at the end of 21 days, it's not working for you, then go back to what you do. What have you got to lose apart from trying something for 21 days? Your change doesn't have to be for life. Now, I can, I'm pretty sure that if you do this and you, and you follow it fastidiously for 21 days, at the end of 21 days, you probably want to make it for life. But that's your choice, not mine. Okay.